All right, what is up you guys and welcome back. Today I'm out here doing a little bit of sheep's head fishing, a little bit of bridge fishing for sheep's head, I should say. Um, and hopefully we're gonna be able to get on them. I've actually already dropped down two shrimp and got two bites. Wasn't able to set the hook, but that's okay. So yeah, live shrimp. I'm gonna show you all the rig that I'm going over. Then I'm gonna turn on the GoPro and we're just gonna go chest mount from here. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a good day. I'm at a very, very popular spot and a very popular flounder fishing spot, but flounder season's closed. There is not one other person here. Got this whole place to myself. I'm thinking the fishing is gonna be good. A little bit of tide movement right now, which is perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna turn on the GoPro and we're gonna get right after it. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna go over the rig that I'm using. I just have a single drop rig right here. This is 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I have a two ounce weight. You could use a one or a two ounce, all depending on current. I could definitely get away with the one ounce today, but I already had the two ounce tied on. Then we go up to a little hook. I don't remember what these are called. I'll show you all the bag in a minute, but it's just a little circle hook. And I think it's a number one size. And then we have our 20 pound tied off to a braid to floral knot, which I have a video on the channel showing how to tie this. Just super simple. And I, I like to make my leader super long so I don't have to keep on tying on a new leader. If this breaks off, I can just move the line tie on a new one. We're using live shrimp right now. Let me get one out for y'all. And when sheep's head fishing, I actually prefer the little shrimp, but these medium sizes will get bit. You just gotta let them eat a little bit longer. Sheep's head have a very unique bite. They kind of just chomp it with their teeth and you can always tell if it's a sheep head because you'll pull up your shrimp and it'll be cut like perfectly in half or have a perfect chunk bit out of it also real quick before i let this down the water is super nice today and i said i wasn't gonna be doing any wade fishing but i did bring the waders just in case and i think i might be going out there in a little bit but we're just gonna drop this down get down on the bottom in between all the rocks and sheep's head fishing just like fishing for flounder or whatever there's a bite right there Oh, I missed him again. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Definitely sheep's head. See how my shrimp's just cut right in half? Let's see if he'll eat a piece of shrimp. But yeah, you just want to drop down and get next to the rocks, and you are going to get snagged a little bit when sheep's head fishing. That's just part of it. Come on, that's not a sheep's head. That's something little. But when there's not a lot of current, like right now we have just a slight bit of current, enough to get us some bites. But there's not a lot of current. So... You don't get snagged as much. When sheep's head fishing, you're fishing around rocks, pilings, bridges, stuff like that. And when there's current pulling in there, it can definitely lead to some snags. Also, I'll go over my gear that I'm using right now. I have a, I'm using, I'm using 30 pound braid. Got the, uh, what is this? 13 fishing reel. Not gonna lie, not my favorite reel, but it does work. And then we have the, not my fault, rod custom rod here this is a great rod for sheep's head fishing because it has a stiff enough backbone that you can yank them out pull away from whatever they're trying to pull you into also great for flounder fishing redfish stuff like that it's a little bit of a heavier rod but very sensitive on the tip where you can feel the little bites so i'm gonna drop this back down in the same spot i have a little tangle a big tangle i guess we're gonna see what we can get i've also caught redfish doing the same thing in the same spot so you never know. Tell you what, there is a bunch of fish because I'm getting bit like crazy. And another shrimp bites the dust. Put it down there, got nibbled, gone. This is why I say I prefer tiny shrimp. Maybe we'll look in here and see if we can find some real small ones. Here's a good one. Hook this guy up by the middle of the body. Hopefully they won't be able to miss the hook. Try the same spot again. There's a bite. I feel like he just stole my bait. You can always tell when it's a sheep head because there's one. Oh, he had it. I should have let him eat. But yeah, you can always tell when it's a sheep head because it'll bite just kind of like this. Little taps, but very assertive. You're getting another difference between a sheep head and a bait stealer. And then they'll slowly start swimming with it. Get another little shrimp. This is a real good one. We're gonna catch one on this. Every shrimp I've dropped down has been bit, so it's just a matter of time until we hook up. It's getting bit already. Oh, he just took my shrimp. No, wait, it's still there. No, it's not. Oh my goodness, guys.
Well, I'm gonna try a little piece of shrimp now. So hopefully they can't miss the hook. But what I remember from last year, they really prefer them live. I guess if they're hungry enough though, and it's an easy meal, they're gonna eat it. But we'll see. There's a bite, there's a bite. That was a sheep's head bite. Come on, bite it. Just waiting for him to start swimming with it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is about to be a challenge. We're gonna use all the shrimp before we even catch one. Maybe we'll try a new spot. We'll drop it closer to us. Maybe that's a little one out there. There we go, perfect. Oh man, forgot the net. There we go, first sheep's head. We got him. Aha. I hope your movie's down here. He's probably gonna be a little small. Sheep's head have to be 15 inches with a daily bag limit of five fish, and this one is close to 15 but i'm thinking he's probably 14 so first guy of the day even if he is 15 we're gonna go ahead and let him go get this hook out of him all right we're retied in the matter of a minute we're gonna go again is it small shrimp right here best one yet Get nibbles already. There's one. Oh. <laughs> Missed him. I don't know if I didn't let him eat or if I set the hook too hard. Got him. Whoa, shit, that's a big fish. <laughs> Whoa. They feel double as big when you're fighting them through the current, but this is something big. What is that? Big sheep's head? Whoa, what was that? It is a big sheep's head. Haha. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's putting work on me. Well, it's a huge one. This is an absolutely huge one. Probably my biggest one ever. There he is. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, there we go. An absolute giant one. Probably one of my biggest ones ever. I'm guessing this thing is around the 18, 20 inch mark. Got the net job from Lorenzo. Watches the channel. All right, just got done retying everything because that thing bent my hook completely. So I just went ahead and retied a whole new leader. Um, he definitely putting hurting on it. So now we're going to get to these hooks. I told you I didn't know what these were called, but these are. Here's what they are right here. Demon perfect circle in line. So there you go. Smallest ones you can get. 
going to loop this guy onto our rig. Still going with the two ounce weight because that current has picked up a little bit, which makes the fishing better, but makes it a little bit harder to fish. When you're fishing around the rocks and stuff, you want to keep your line tight, but it's hard to keep your line tight while letting your weight hit the bottom in strong current. So if you don't keep it tight, then your line's going to get tangled around all the rocks and it's going to be super hard. And you're going to lose a lot more gear. Anyways, we're retied. Let's see if we can get another shrimp. And that one just came from way up under the bridge right here versus the side of it where I've been fishing. Oh, lost all my shrimp. No. Ha. Ah. <laughs> get them hooked up and I am hooking them in the middle of the body. Usually I'd hook them in the head or in the tail. It all just depends. I keep changing it up, but with sheep's head, like I was saying earlier, they like to bite and take chunks out of it. So I figure I hook them in the middle of the body. It gives them less of a chance to steal it off the hook without getting hooked. So we're gonna cast this one up under here. Let's see what happens. Okay, I felt it hit the bottom. Whoa, that was a bite already. Getting bit. That was another one. Whoa, another big one. Now this guy feels a little smaller. Another one. There we go, another sheep's head right here. Just like the first one, probably close to a keeper, but after catching that big one, I don't see a point in keeping these little guys. Let them live, let them get bigger. Hopefully we'll catch another big one. Those human teeth right there. Pretty crazy. I'm gonna try to pop this hook out of his mouth. There he is. Get the release. All right, very next shrimp going out. Just as I'm sitting here talking, the tide is starting to pick up even more. Makes it very hard to get the weight down. I can't get it down. I'll try like that. There's one right there. I don't know if he still has it or not. Take my bait. Well, I just loaded up the truck and I think that's gonna be it for sheep's head fishing. I'm pretty sure I've lost about 10 to 15 weights and that current's just moving too much to keep the shrimp on the bottom. So I'm gonna head home. Y'all stay tuned. This is gonna be a really cool catch and cook, something really unique and something that I've been wanting to try for a while. So I think it's gonna be good. I will see y'all back at the house. So we're in the kitchen right now and I'm about to cook up the sheep's head. And today we're making a pretty cool recipe, pretty different kind of recipe, and that is lobster rolls. So I know some of you are probably thinking, well, how are you gonna make lobster rolls with sheep's head? And honestly, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but what I've read is that if you boil fish with sugar and water and a little bit of salt and lemon, that it kind of firms up the fish and changes the texture and the taste of it, and it resembles lobster. So do I think it's gonna taste just like lobster? No, absolutely not. But I think it will definitely have a different texture and a more firm texture, which is the important part for this dish. So this is actually called poor man's lobster, and it's typically made with cod or halibut or something like that. But I think sheep's head will work great because as many of y'all know, sheep's head is already considered kind of a sweet meat. So I think it's gonna work pretty good. If it does work, oh well. But we're gonna be making two kinds of lobster rolls, Maine and Connecticut, so the warm and the cold, and let's get right into it. I'm actually gonna go into the voiceover mode just so everything kind of flows a little bit better, and I'll see y'all there. All right, so for this catch and cook, I started by putting a couple cups of water in a pan, then adding about a cup of sugar to it, and these are not exact measurements because I don't really know how much to add, I'm just guessing, but about a cup of sugar and then a fourth cup of salt, and then I squeezed in a half of a lemon. And while that water was heating up, I went ahead and went over the ingredients. So for the main lobster roll, which is a cold one, or basically just a lobster salad, I started with mayonnaise, some celery, some fresh dill to chop up, and also some green onions, and then the other half of the lemon and some seafood seasoning. And now for the Connecticut style lobster roll, which is a warm one, it's super simple, just butter and once again, seafood seasoning. Then of course we have our two sheep's head fillets and then our butter brioche hot dog buns from HEB Bakery. And these are not exactly what you would use in a traditional lobster roll, but it's the closest thing I could find. So to start cooking, the first thing I did was cut my sheep's head into little chunks. Now you don't want them diced up super fine, but you also don't want half of a filet inside of your roll. So just cubing them up into bite-sized pieces is exactly what I did and it seemed to work pretty well. Wow. 
once that water sugar mixture finally came to a rolling boil and everything was dissolved, I went ahead and started to add in my fish chunks. So it does not take long to cook the fish, just a few minutes is all that needs, but while I was letting those boil, I went ahead and made my sauce. So I started off with a couple scoops of mayonnaise, and I should say that I honestly don't know what goes into the sauce. I just took a bunch of different recipes for it and mixed them all together. So basically just do whatever you want, as long as it tastes good, who really cares? So a couple scoops of mayonnaise, a little bit of seafood seasoning, a couple squeezes of lemon, and then I added my cut up dill. And this is the part where you gotta be careful because that stuff is pretty strong. If you add too much, all you're gonna taste is dill. If you don't add enough, then you're not gonna get that nice tangy flavor, I guess you could say. So a couple pieces of cut up dill and then the celery just for some crunch because like I said, you're basically just making a lobster salad or like a seafood salad, it's all the same. I then gave that a nice mix together and by the time that was finished the fish was also done cooking so I took it out drained off the extra water and I was super impressed by how it turned out it had definitely firmed up a little bit and I even took a taste of it and it was really sweet from that sugar water and Sheepshead is notorious for tasting like crab and I know we're going for lobster here but this tastes identical to crab and I'm definitely not complaining. So I went ahead and put that first batch into the fridge to cool down because that is for the cold lobster roll. And then this one that you're seeing right here is for the warm lobster roll. So what I did was I boiled these up and then threw them into a pan with some melted butter, garlic, and green onions just so they would soak up all that flavor. And it looked super good and I took a taste of this one too. And yeah, it tasted really good as well. While I was letting that simmer in that butter garlic mixture, I took my buns, split them open, and then gave them a nice little painting of melted butter so they would toast up really well. I then threw them into a warm pan to let them get nice and toasted. It only took about a minute or so and then it was time to serve up the warm lobster roll. Now this is served with a little cup of warm butter on the side so you can dip the whole roll in there, but I went ahead and just spooned some on top so it would start soaking into that bread. Now that it was just about time to eat, I went ahead and took my chilled fish out of the fridge and threw on a little bit of that dressing or sauce or whatever you want to call it and just very, very carefully mix it together. I did not want to crumble the fish so I just tossed it lightly and made sure that everything had a nice coating. So the last and final step was to take this, throw it in between some more toasted buns and you know we had to pile it nice and high and then of course before we took a bite I had to hit some b-roll shots. our main lobster roll which is the cold one and then our Connecticut one which is the hot one with butter. Let me tell you I already tried the fish uh, just right after it came out of the water and it definitely soaked up a lot of that sugar and surprisingly it tasted not like lobster but exactly like crab. So let's go in for the main one first. Come take a look at that. We have a cold one right here. It looks delicious. We're gonna try it out. Where do I even start in this thing? I want to get a big piece of fish in the first bite. Alright, ready? That's amazing. That is really good. I'm just gonna take one bite of that for right now, but that is awesome. Wow. I don't know if that tastes like how a lobster roll tastes or not, but it tastes good. Now we're moving on to the second one. I mean, you can't go wrong with the butter on here. So generally served with the side of warm butter too, so you go for the dip in it in between every bite. 
We're going healthy, good for the heart today, so lots of butter, as you all know. Let's go for this bite. Wait, wait, get a shot of this one. Hopefully the butter doesn't drip everywhere. It is dripping, it's all right. All right, let's do it. All right, these are both super good. The bun's toasted perfectly right there. Uh, honestly, the warm one's really good with the butter, but I may have to go with the cold one as my favorite. So definitely recommend trying this out. I've had this idea to make these for a while now, and then went out, ended up catching a sheep's head, and everything worked out perfect. So thank you all so much, so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, thank you guys so much. And until next time, peace. <laughs>